Well, offshore Europe is just around the corner. And the theme this year is fueling the energy transition together. So what can we expect from ABB Energy Industries at the event? Thanks very much, Kevin. So uh, first of all, I'd say I've been going to offshore Europe since uh, 2013. And what's really exciting is the move from what companies, uh, companies kind of talking about what they're planning to do uh, in areas like the energy transition, even at that stage and things like digitalization. Um, so what they're looking to do to talking about what they have done, what they've learned and what they plan on building. Um, in terms of these advances as well. So the core theme for us is around making a world of difference by enabling safe, smart and sustainable operations through things like the innovative and integrated solutions to digitalize, automate and electrify the industry. So I can drill a little bit deeper on those, those three messages there around safe, start, smart and sustainable. So for me, the, the safe, um, safe part is a boundary condition. It's about supporting the highest industry standards and always focusing on risk reduction. We operate in a, in a high hazard industry, so it's all about risk reduction. Mm -hmm. um, smart in terms of um, enabling a, a improved efficiencies through the integration of technology. Uh, digital solutions can increasingly help um, improve the accuracy of, of data in real time and improve that decision making to ensure assets uh, are performing at their very best uh, for as long as possible. And then thirdly, and increasingly um, important, is sustainability. So we know that efficiencies uh, need to be made to make that world of difference operationally, financially, environmentally, and for our society fundamentally. So one of the core themes throughout, um, throughout offshore Europe and the things that ABB will be talking about is around sustainability and, and how we can support companies that are now really changing the nature of their business from maybe being purely solely oil and gas producers mm -hmm. to, to being energy companies and, and what that means in terms of the energy mix of how they uh, power their facilities, the energy that they, uh, that they need to transforming actually and diversifying some of their business from not only producing uh, oil and gas, but also diversifying and looking at uh, uh, offshore wind as, as producing uh, a new energy source and things like hydrogen increasingly as well. Okay, and I know offshore wind is one of the topics and obviously maintenance we talk about. I see from the agenda as well that there's the facilities of the future. That's the theme of one of the keynotes that ABB is leading. What do you mean by a facility of the future? Yeah, so facilities of the future is, is all about that integrated approach to energy efficiency, decarbonisation and automation. So I'm really looking forward to this session in particular. Uh, we've got speakers, of course, from ABB, but also um, Equinor, Technif, FMC and, uh, and Total uh, Energies as well. Uh, Total, Total have just renamed themselves Total Energies and so uh, it's great to have them uh, on board as part of the session. So offshore energy production facilities, they've traditionally uh, been developed to operate uh, pretty much as, as a standalone independent entities, but increasingly have become interdependent in terms of uh, import and export routes, transport links and things like that, uh, accommodation services, electrical power integration and, and things. But increasingly it's recognised that for the provision of, of cost effective environmentally acceptable solutions now in the world that we're living in, um, it's important for that interdependence to only grow uh, much stronger. But, so we really need a step change in the way that we develop and operate that, that new infrastructure. So uh, there, offshore operators are in, increasingly in, in seeing the importance of renewable energy in the mix as well in terms of how they power uh, their production facilities, mm -hmm. whether that's being uh, populated by renewable wind, for instance, or maybe tidal power um, as well. And, and what we're seeing and what we'll see in, in, the, um, in, the, in the talk is the supply chain, how the supply chain is really um, reacting uh, to these changes in customer demands, uh, now diversifying into these new opportunities. And we see uh, excellent use cases around digital and the robotic technologies that are really now finding their home uh, within an industry that needs to reduce their manning levels in order to survive as well. Now, you mentioned 
um, maintenance. And I know that your specific session on Wednesday the, the 9th is around digitizing maintenance. Because you mentioned facilities of the future, but a lot of the infrastructure we have offshore today needs to be operated and, and maintained safely. What will you be chatting about in that session? Any, any hints as to what we hear about? Absolutely, Kevin. So uh, we're going to talk about digitalizing maintenance, but specifically getting in control of asset performance management. And that's really, really important for existing uh, facilities that, uh, you know, they're being pressured around their margins, they're being pressured around their production costs and their efficiency. And in order to um, survive, um, they, they need to look at doing their operations and maintenance in a different way. And that's uh, using people, process, and technology more effectively together. So we're going to talk about reimagining an approach to maintenance to drive down cost and uh, improve reliability with a six-step plan. So in the first part, we're going to talk about um, how you might predict failure and the different techniques that you can use to predict failure across equipment and assets. And and who might be better at that? So increasingly we're seeing the, the use of data science and data analysis, but who's really better, the data scientist or the reliability engineer, or is there a best, world, a best of both worlds kind of approach? And then we're gonna look at uh, implementing uh, technology, uh, how that's getting um, easier, of course, but then don't forget about your people in the process. So institutionalizing those changes in the way that we do things around here, um, is all about building a reliability culture. So we're going to look at um, some cases of where customers uh, of, of ABBs and other operators have been doing that to really build that reliability culture um, to, to change the way that they do things. And then we're also going to question um, in the first part, how do you eliminate turnarounds? So turnarounds are a big cost for energy operators because of course it means they're not producing during that time. They quite often have a huge amount of uh, maintenance and overhauls activity they're doing at the same time, which drives cost in itself. And of course they're not driving revenue at that point. So actually can you change your mindset and reframe the challenge um, to unlock that availability by eliminating uh, turnarounds completely? And then we're going to step through that, that six step plan about, first of all, gaining visibility of data that might support you, understands what gaps you might have uh, in that data, uh, what adding uh, sensors could look like to kind of improving the amount of data that you have around your equipment, around your asset. Uh, the different approaches you would use to analyze uh, some of the key trends and faults. Step four is about leveraging these to then predict potential failure uh, in the future in order to optimize your maintenance strategy. We've talked a bit in steps uh, one to four predominantly around technology. So then we talk in step five around really adjusting your operations and what that means from a, a process perspective before then dropping into the people in step six uh, last but not least, around, again, bringing in that reliability culture. So a six-step plan to really change the way that maintenance is done around offshore assets. It's going to be a pretty busy week. <laughs> really looking forward to it, Kevin. I'll, I'll see you there virtually. Thanks a lot. Thank you.